Hey, installment number four of uh, Skip Saunterings. I need something Skip Saunterings from something, but I don't know what else to add because it's really just sauntering through my mind and what's the topic of the day because I can't write fast enough. So if you've got a suggestion, let me know and visit us and subscribe to us on YouTube. Anyways, heading home from dropping off my taxes as I talked about. But there's another thing I keep wondering about. Are we starting to see that peak transgender has come? We've seen the culture wars being aggressively uh, carried out by the left. And time after time, the Republican Party has kept quiet. And they've done nothing. They just said, hey, we're against taxes. That's just about where they go, it's just on taxes. Some of them have been active in the culture war for quite some time. Ted Cruz is one that I can think of. There are a few others, but very few. Uh, it seems, however, that the younger set here in New Hampshire, uh, I would say Carolyn Levitt, Tim Baxter, uh, Julian Assard, a few others that are running for Congress are actively engaging in the culture war from the aspect of we can no longer let the left run the culture because they know just as well as we do that our political activists, as uh, Breitbart said uh, before he passed away, politics is downstream from culture. So you change the culture as Italian socialist Antonio Gramsci and the socialists uh, from the Frankfurt School started so long ago, started their long march uh, through the cultural institutions of America. Change the culture, unmoor them from history, try to separate kids from their families, and chaos results. Where there is chaos, there is opportunity, as Levitt once said. And the whole idea is to create opportunities to change the politics. And they're doing it little bit by little bit. As we've seen in survey after survey, we baby boomers believe in capitalism. As they get younger and younger, we see that they're more accepting of socialism. Um, I do wonder, however, if they know what so real socialism is and what real socialism does. And what its whole idea is to be only a waypoint to communism. And we are seeing now what's going on in Chinese, uh, in communist China, where the head guy, uh, Chairman Z, has decreed that there, we will have a no COVID policy in a country of 1.5 or so billion people. And in Shanghai, we've seen a total lockdown in most of the neighborhoods of a city of millions. And the state is now throwing people out of their homes so that they can be uh, used as quarantine areas. Now, where do these other people go? Who knows? But here's the point. Capitalism requires freedom to, to work. Communism, which takes care of the economy and the governance, only puts itself state, but puts itself as the state as a priority. We're seeing that in China right now, where the mandates of the state, we shall not embarrass uh, Chairman Z because he's the one who came up with this no COVID policy. And we're seeing the results of that. People are starving, they're not getting their medicines, and they're losing their homes. Why? Because communism believes that the state is premier. And when the state is premier, you hardly even read, just like these Chinese citizens where the stories are coming out of China, that they're yelling from their apartments for food and medicine. We see them crying on the streets when they're being yanked out. You're just a cog, a mere speck. And yet people are complaining here in America, on the left, of all the dastardly things that the state does. And yet they still want to turn us into China. They want to silence our speech. Just look at the kerfuffle going on with Twitter when Elon Musk said, hey, I'll buy the entire uh, company. And, they're, and I have to say, here's all of the Washington Post uh, reporters and uh, employees going, oh, that will be the death of democracy. As the second most richest person in the world uh, owns the Washington Post. 
intellectual honesty, cognitive dissonance. Yeah, I think they've got a lot to learn. But it always always seems to go just one way. Anyways, Twitter is following along in the same idea as China. They wish not to be successful. They only want the control. So the Twitter board of directors put in a poison pill. And now they're finding out that they're barely pay, playing chess to Elon Musk's four, four dimensional or three dimensional chess game. Because he's already put them on point and making them look bad and bringing out the real cause of him wanting to buy the entire company. They want the control of your, over your speech, they want to control the public square. Just like the Chinese uh, communists wish to control their population. For, not only for their own benefit, but for the benefit of the state. And Twitter wants to do the same thing, control the speech uh, to support uh, their puppet in the president. They wish to control the narrative. As we all know, control the narrative, you have to control the speech. Control the speech, you control the ideas. Control the ideas, you control what is allowable to think, and sooner or later, not able to even articulate an idea means you've won the battle. Welcome to 1984, and Twitter and Facebook are the leading cause of that happening here in America. They've decided that they, private companies, can control what you say, what you speak, what you think, and over time, how you will vote. This is another installment of Skip Saunterings. From something I still get to know, let me know. Thank you. Rock TV.